All right, so we're going to be talking about spoilers, especially the ending for Venom Let There Be Carnage. If you haven't seen the movie yet, get out of here. If you don't give a shit about spoilers, welcome to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. So at the end of the movie, Venom and Eddie are basically on the run. Everyone knows that basically Venom's been running around eating people and that him and Eddie are in a bonded relationship. There's absolute chaos from the fallout of the fight with Cletus Cassidy. Police officers injured, police officers dead, and they've basically taken the heat for it, and they're hiding. While they're hiding, Venom and Eddie have an interesting discussion. The discussion is that symbiotes share memories from basically the beginning of their kind, and these memories are passed down through all of the children, all of the symbiotes. And he can share those memories and information with Eddie. He attempts to, and then things go absolutely left. And when I mean they go absolutely left, I mean it goes absolutely left right off the fucking rails. Because essentially, we see the entire universe get rewritten around both Eddie and Venom. To which Venom freaks out, Eddie's freaking out because they don't understand what the fuck is going on. Then the TV cuts on, and it's J. Jonah Jameson. Not the J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man 2. It's the J. Jonah Jameson from... I get all of the new Spider-Man movies messed up. No Way Home. Far From Home? Far From Home. Far From Home. Um, Bald, the, the blogger, essentially. Not the newspaper mogul. So... Venom starts freaking out because he sees Peter on screen and he starts like licking the screen like, ooh, bad guy, I'm going to eat him, which basically sets up eventually Venom's going to run into Peter, get onto Peter, and because he's a symbiote and he adapts, essentially the, when he bonds to a new host, he takes on the best traits of the host and those traits become his traits. We see a hint of that in let there be carnage when he's walking past well when eddie's walking past uh cletus cassidy's cell and he looks into the cell and he looks around at the walls and he keeps walking venom's able to perfectly remember everything inside the cell and deduce what's going on and where that individual was from now in early on in the movie we're led to believe that it's venom's ability that he did that until the point where eddie and venom are absolutely separated and Eddie's able to essentially deduce everything on his own, showing that his powers of deduction were extremely good. He was just lazy as shit. And Venom more or less adapted that ability for himself. He's going to bond to Peter Parker, get his spider abilities, get the, the web fluid. And then we're going to get the more classic Venom that we are used to from the comic books. Finally um universe gets rewritten around them and i mean it gets rewritten around them which tells me that essentially this happens well the universe being rewritten around them happens after the next spider-man movie and i don't know whether or not this is a hint that venom's going to show up inside of spider-man no way home no way home far from home whatever the new one is home they always go with those stupid home names and it always throws me off but the newest Spider-Man movie is definitely, maybe, going to feature Venom. And I say maybe it's going to feature Venom because I don't know whether or not Sony's going to pull that trigger or whether or not... No, I take that back. Because now I remember that um, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy was definitely on the set for No Way Home. So it's going to be super interesting if he does have a cameo in the movie along with all of the other villains that are going to be in the movie. But I don't know whether or not they would pull that trigger and make Eddie Brock a villain since he's been an anti-hero in two movies. Super weird. This is Sony doing this shit on the side. I mean, it's a good way for Sony to say, hey, ignore our last two movies. Our last two movies don't really fucking matter. Um, just essentially focus on Spider-Man and what's happening in the Spider-Man universe. And then we're going to hand the character over to Marvel. And then Marvel can do whatever the fuck they want with it which may or may not be the best move for them since both of the movies aren't well received. I like the Venom movie. It was okay. Like, the Venom movie is good. I, <clears throat> wow, lost my voice there. 
the Venom movie is good as a popcorn movie. Like, if you're just going there to have fun, when Carnage is ripping shit up, blast. But if you sit down and you actually think about the plot, you're like, this movie doesn't make any fucking sense. But yeah, at the end of the movie, it seems as though Doctor Strange magic has gone awry. One of the individuals who's sadly been snatched away from their universe just happens to be Eddie Brock and Venom, who are now in the MCU canonically. Which means that the previous two movies, I say the previous two movies, like I didn't just go and watch this one movie. Let There Be Carnage and the original Vellum are, Vellum? Venom, are no longer canon. So we have to see where not only the characters go from here, but also we're going to have to see where exactly um, the individuals that they introduce in the former movies are going to end up, whether or not they decide to bring them back. But that's essentially it. That is the plot the plot i'm tired i am so sorry but that is essentially what happened at the end of let there be carnage peace